Well, good morning, everyone. Is this loud enough? Are we coming through? Okay. This week we begin a new worship series, and the anchor image, the theme, will be about the table. And we come to multiple tables in our lives, don't we? And uh, this table, the one that is the, the display table, will change each week according to the theme and will keep us on target. This week, we're, we're thinking about Jesus at the table with his friends for his last meal. And so that's what will happen in this space. And you'll see it in the children's message. And scripture will be presented from here where we will be reenacting the original recipients of the word when, when the epistles were sent to the churches and those at the table will read it to us. Uh, a first read through, so full of whatever stumbles and things might have happened around those tables. And that's how scripture will be presented. And of course, we're coming to the table today. We won't every week in this series, but the series ends on uh, the first Sunday in October, which is World Communion Sunday. So we will be coming to the table again that week. But uh, each week in between, we will be talking about hospitality at the table, about the grace and the love and the peace that we find when we come welcomed at God's table. And so I'll actually be using the table as the pulpit. I will be preaching from behind the table. And during our prayers, we will be gathering at a table where God is seated. And we will be at an intimate setting with God sharing our prayers. So if you are in the room and you have a written prayer request, I'm going to want them in that basket. So I can collect them later or you can whatever. But that will be our practice. That basket is where we'll, we'll uh, pull up our written prayer requests. So lots of instructions for today. Lots of things that might feel off-putting, but let's not feel that way. Let's indeed feel welcomed in this space because that's what we do at tables. And in fact, everyone is welcome here. No matter who you are or where you are, no matter how you express yourself, it doesn't matter what it is that you feel you are because that is who you are and express that here in this safe space, in this place, on this land that was stewarded by the Wabanaki people for which we are caretakers now. So let us gather ourselves and focus on why we are here. Um, and I have a question. I need to share that before we state this. We um, each week are going to have a reflection, and you'll see this on the screen during the prelude, our opening consideration. So as we move into our worship, as David plays, let us think about this question. Consider times that you have felt excluded from communities. I'm sure that's happened for all of us at different times, right? Are there any ways that our congregation is practicing metaphorical secret handshakes? those things that uh, only we know and keep people away? And how can we make sure that we aren't putting up barriers to anyone who might want to join us? So that's what we'll reflect on. But let us first center ourselves with those words that we do each week because it is important to know why we are here. We are here for this mission, which we speak together now. Seeking to walk in the way of Jesus, we are an open and affirming church faithfully using who we are and what we have to serve those on the margins of our community. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And let us welcome one another here now with signs of welcome and of peace, not forgetting those of you who are online.
Welcome to our new worship series, Come to the Table. We will hear the call to dine with Jesus, an invitation that means much more than a simple eating experience. It never was simply about eating with Jesus. The table was a place where he fed people and also challenged them to acts of hospitality that reflect God's way. When we say yes to the place at Christ's table, we accept a way of life that embraces God's definition of love, peace, grace, and joy. Let us sing. We know that there is a place for us at the table. Our hearts are filled with gratitude. We notice that there is a place for those not like us. We come ready to open our hearts beyond their current size. We humbly take our seat. We look into each other's face and know the presence of Jesus.
Five verses, right? Yeah. 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 Bonus verses. I was counting the best I could <laughs> while reading the notes. Welcome everybody, I'm Denise and I'm not alone today, I have a friend with me. Can you tell them who you are? Yeah, hi, I'm Cynthia. I'm happy to be here. Oh, Cynthia, we're happy you're here too. Over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking a lot about just how important it is for us to be in this space together in a community. Does anyone know what the word community means? Wow, we have some smart people out there. Here's how I would define it. A community is a group of people that come together because they have something in common. It might be where they live, it might be what they believe in, it might be an activity that they're doing together. Your school is a community, your neighborhood that you live in is a community, and our church is a community. In a community, you don't all have to be exactly the same or like the exact same things, but you have something in common that brings you together. Ooh, it sounds like a secret club where all the cool people hang out, right? Oh, uh, well, being in a community isn't really all about just being cool. Um, well, I think it is. And I think our community would be cooler if we had a secret handshake and passwords. Hey, Ooh, our church oh. should have a secret handshake. Well, I, I guess, I mean, I, I guess that could be fun to have a secret handshake. Okay, okay, let's make a secret handshake. Okay, yeah, something like this. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Okay, let me try. One, two, three, four, uh, five. Woo! Uh, uh, um, I, I, no, no, no. Try again. Okay, ready? Ready? Try again. Okay. One, two, three, four. Woo! One, two. Woo! Um, your oh. ears aren't very floppy. No, I'm sorry. My ear, you have much floppier ears than I do, Cynthia. Yeah, you know, I don't know if you're cool enough to learn this handshake. Hmm. But I thought we were both part of this community. I, you can't, I can't, I'm not cool enough to be in your community? Yeah, I don't, what do you all think? Is she cool enough? Oh, oh, thank you. Um, I think everyone should be invited, whether or not they can do the secret handshake. Don't you think? You guys are some very, very kind community members. The most important things that we do in this community are share. We share music, we share time, we share food sometimes. And we'll do that with anyone, whether they can do the secret, secret handshake or not, right? Yeah, you're right. You know, one of the most important things we can share is the message that everyone is welcome here. This church is God's house and everyone is welcome in God's house, no matter what. You don't have to be cool or know how to do the secret handshake because our church isn't a secret club that only some people are invited to. I think that's fantastic, Cynthia. Um, do you have a prayer you can teach us, Cynthia? Yeah, I'd love to. Let's say a prayer together about how everyone is welcome in God's house. I'll say a line and then you repeat after me. Ready? Here we go. We come to the table. We come to the table. To share in God's feast. To share in God's feast. Everyone's welcome. Everyone's welcome. We gather in peace. We gather in peace. This is God's table. This is God's table. It's not yours or mine. It's not yours or mine. God's love is for everyone. God's love is for everyone. For now and all time. For now and all time. Time to play, David.
we gathered together? It, it's there. Yeah, I know. That's the first week. Okay, sorry. As we gather? <laughs> yes, as we gather. Uh, isn't the hymn though? Oh my god. It is. It is. Oh, I don't sorry. Know the as we gather in the temple. Anybody know the number? <laughs> I'll find it. Okay, I got it. It's always something, right? Come on. <laughs> Jesus' lesson at the Last Supper was clear. The meal of the kingdom of God is for all. Saints, strangers, those who persecute and betray you, those who are joyful and those who weep. The author of the epistle letter to the Romans reminds us and invites us to do as Jesus did. Do not be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. In the words of Jesus, take up your cross and follow me. This requires that we follow God's way in offering a good meal at God's table for all of God's guests. Hear now this scripture advice from the 12th chapter of the letter to the Romans, followed by a remembrance of what Jesus said in the Gospel of Matthew. Imagine those early Christian Romans gathered at a table, reading this advice to one another and remembering the words of Jesus. Love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil. Hold on for dear life to good. Be good friends who love deeply. Practice playing second fiddle. Don't burn out. Keep yourselves fueled and aflame. Be alert, servants of the master, cheerfully expectant. Don't quit in hard times. Pray all the harder. Help needy Christians. Be inventive in hospitality. Bless your enemies. No cursing under your breath. Laugh with your happy friends when they're happy. Share tears when they're down. Get along with each other. Don't be stuck up. Make friends with nobodies. Don't be the great somebody. Don't hit back. Discover beauty in everyone. If you've got it in you, get along with everybody. Don't insist on getting even. That's not for you to do. I'll do the judging, says God. I'll take care of it. Our scriptures tell us that if you see your enemy hungry, go buy that person lunch, or if they're thirsty, get them a drink. Your generosity will surprise them with goodness. Don't let evil get the best of you. Get the best of evil by doing good. Do you remember what Jesus said to his disciples when they wanted him to be quiet in order to save himself? Anyone who intends to come with me has to let me lead. You're not in the driver's seat, I am. Do not run from suffering, embrace it. Follow me and I'll show you how. Self-help is no help at all. Self-sacrifice is the way, my way to finding yourself, your true self. What kind of deal is it to get everything you want but lose yourself? What could you ever trade your soul for? Let's all say, hear, hear to the word. Hear, hear. Hear, hear.
of you who've lost hope Come you a longing for what you do not know Come you hungry for justice Aching for heaven on earth Come you've been tossed aside And don't remember what you're worth Come as you are Come you weary Come and lay your burdens down Come as you are Bring your hopes Bring your doubts and your scars Come as you are Come you who've been cast out All who've been shamed Come you who are looking For that mystery you can name Come you crying for mercy Hoping for peace on earth Come you carrying questions All you've been so hurt Come as you are, come you weary, come and lay your burdens down. Come as you are, bring your hopes, bring your doubts, and bring your scars. Come as you are. Oh, you misfits and prophets. Oh, you sinners and saints Oh, you broken and needy Weird and weary and faint All who seek to find To open their eyes All who need to find A safe place to cry Come as you are Come you weary, come and lay your burdens down Come as you are, bring your hopes Bring your doubts and bring your scars Come as you are I assume that we all know the golden rule, right? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. But I wonder if we need to just scrap that. Maybe we need a better rule than the golden rule. Maybe a platinum rule. Maybe the platinum rule is not about yourself so much. Maybe the platinum rule is treat others the way they want to be treated. Maybe it's time that we start thinking about not projecting ourselves onto others, but really getting to know everyone who's invited to the table. Because everyone is invited to the table, whether we like it or not. And often we don't like it. Hospitality. If we're going to be at the table, we have to show hospitality, right? And hospitality needs to be more than simply manners and politeness. Knowing how to set the table, doing all the right etiquette, right? That's... That, that's important, but it also can be off-putting, and it also can be performative, can't it? You just do the right things, and you're polite, and you're nice, but not necessarily good. Being nice, being polite, showing proper manners doesn't make you a good person. It just makes you acceptable. As a matter of fact, you might be the kind of person who is, in their behavior, far from acceptable, but knows how to behave appropriately. You've never met anybody like that, right? The world doesn't know anyone like that. Of course we do. You see, it's easy to be polite when you say things like, oh, it's only business. It's polite, but is it good? Is it right? Is it nice? What about, I'm sorry, but I can't help you. You think about Hal and Dave and the 
pod bay door, right? I'm sorry, Dave. I can't do that. <laughs> Couldn't be more polite as he's taking his life, right? It's creepy sometimes how we do those things. And we might say very politely, well, that's not how we do things here. And we all know how those things feel. We all know what it's like to be on the receiving end of those kind of things. And we have to think about what it means when we're on the other end of it, getting caught up in a friendly group, in a gathering that knows one another, that is welcoming and accepting, at least if you're already here. It's hard to do that self-examination and say, what does the stranger experience coming in? What does the visitor understand when they show up? When, when someone shows up in our worship space as a guest, do they need a, a dictionary and a map? In the history of the church, sometimes you did, right? Go to the sanctuary. Well, where's that? It was past the vestibule. Go through the narthex. <laughs> you know, everyday language, stuff that we all know, right? We, but we all know because we're ingrained in the rituals and the practices. We already know it, but is that the way we welcome someone else? Is it, in fact, a secret handshake that we're willing to share? But, you know, we got to teach people the handshake, don't we? And then... When we do that, we don't always do that real well either. I like to think of the, the three B's. The B's being belonging, believing, and behaving. And I don't think we put them in the same order that Jesus did. You know, to belong, we tend to think we need to train people how to behave and tell them what to believe before they can belong. Think about the historical confirmation practice, right? We raise up our children, we teach them, we, we show them how to behave, we teach them. Before we let them come to the table or before we allow them to participate, we ask them to learn how it works and to tell us what they believe, right? You join the church by a statement of faith and belief. Well, is that the way Jesus did it? Did Jesus put believing and behaving before belonging? when he walked along the shoreline and said, follow me? He didn't say, follow me at the end of a six-week training course, which will teach you how to be a disciple, right? He didn't say, um, come and practice being a disciple with me for a while before you go on the road. He just said, let's go. Let's go now. Let's do this thing. And along the way, through his words and his example, he taught. He taught them what to believe and how to behave. And how did that go? The disciples are not notorious for knowing everything, are they? They're constantly asking Jesus to explain it again. There are heroes. <laughs> there are models, because that's us. If we are to follow Jesus, we're going to keep asking, what's that again? How'd that go? And if we're not, then we have cleaned up the practice of our faith to a point where we know what to do, and we go through the motions, and it is just going through the motions. And so we can come to the table like this and just go through the motions and think we've done the thing and think that that's all good and we've earned something, and that runs in the face of God's love. Because we receive through grace. It's offered to us without condition. And if we put conditions before us, it's just us conditioning it, not God. God says, come to the table. Be present. Enjoy this meal with me. If we define belonging as saying the right words and doing the right things, then we've put up a wall, whether we mean to or not. And I assume we generally don't mean to, but that doesn't mean the wall isn't there. And yes, we might have a lovely door in it, but we've got to show people where the door is. Maybe we just need to tear down the walls. Maybe we need to accept that everyone is welcome at the table. Maybe we need to understand that we don't control the invitations, right? It's a dinner party here at this table. We're not the host. We've got to remember that. We're not the host. It's not our table. It's God's table. Jesus is the host, and that means Jesus is going to invite whoever Jesus wants to come to the table. And yes, that includes all of us, but it also includes people you may not want to have dinner with. Too bad. <laughs> Too bad. You're going to rub elbows with people who are very different from you, 
some who might not even like you very much, and truthfully, some that you may not like very much. And what if that's the point? What if that's what we're supposed to learn at this table? That if I'm welcome here, everyone's welcome here. Think of who Jesus invited to have that last meal with him. Peter. Peter the Rock, who was so faithful and so wonderful, he was about to deny Jesus three times in his most needed time. Judas was at table with Jesus, the one who was going to turn him in and cause his death. He invited to the table with him, knowing full well that's what would happen, knowing full well that the people around that table with him would not be there in his hardest moment, which was just to come. They'd all run away but they're still welcome at the table. So there's no excuse for us. We're welcome here. So let us not think that we're something special, that this is our special table. This is a special table, God's special table. And all, all are welcome here. Amen. God is present here, always here, always now. That's the gift. And so we turn to God who is ready to hear us and listen with our prayers. And we will begin with those who are online. If you are uh, online, please unmute yourself if you want to share something and uh, we will hear your prayer request, your joy or concern. And if you would like to make sure it's recorded in our weekly newsletter, also please share it in the chat. So are there any online? Continuing prayers for the hungry and the homeless. This is our prayer. Mark has shared, thank you for your prayers for Tina's mother, who is now back to herself. Much appreciated. Are there prayers in the room? Prayers for all of the school-age children, their teachers, the school administrators, and all the support staff that it takes to educate the children of this country and this great state of Maine. Also, prayers for John and Jackie Dalton as they head for Alaska this week. Prayer. Prayers for my wife, Regina, that she gets some answers to give her some relief. This is our prayer. I have a hard conversation at work and situation that I need to deal with this week, so prayers around that. We bring ourselves, our whole selves, the gift that we bring to this potluck is ourselves. And we come and we are seated with our God who indeed hears our prayers and spends time with us. At this table we lift our voices in prayer. At this table we find your peace. At this table we know you have drawn near. At this table we find release. At this table we 
in prayer at this table we find your peace at this table we know you have drawn near at this table we find Oh God, we come to so many tables in our lives. We find joy, we find peace, and we find an invitation to be present. And sometimes we don't like who we're with at that table, or we try to control who sits with us. Remind us as we sit with you in this space, in this time, that all are welcome, that all are your children, that we might see from your perspective that love rules, that love always wins, and that you are love. And so we have all that we need. So even in these times when we see suffering and pain in our lives, in the lives of those we love, in the lives of those whom we barely know or don't know at all or even in the lives of those that we wish pain upon help us to conquer it all with love to cover it all with your grace to be people who follow because we belong who take up our cross who order our last meal on death row and face our own death because nothing can stop us from being drawn to you. Help us. Love us into that journey. The journey of following your child, our Savior. Who when he was among us, taught us to pray. And share with us words that we share with your people over all time and in all places. Saying... Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We respond to the great gift of God with our own gifts, whatever they may be. Most especially the gift of our own being. We offer ourselves, our time, our talent, and our treasure. And if you have treasure to give, if you might share financially, you can do so by visiting our website. You can use the QR code on the screen to find that section. And if you're here in the room, there is the plate by the door that you might use on the way out. And among the great gifts of God, of course, is creation itself. And we are burdened with the need to care for it. And so we pause, as is our practice, for a creation care moment. I'll be briefer this week. <laughs> this is the green tip of the month, the truth about lawn chemicals. When I visited my family's summer home last week, I saw something troubling. The tick, mosquito, and lawn chemical people were out everywhere. 
Have we arrived at a time when the best educated people give no thought to the consequences of their actions? How do we get to a place where toxic chemicals are freely manufactured, sold, and spread by landscapers without question? The most common lawn chemical is glyphosate, also known by its brand name of Roundup. This chemical is classified as probably carcinogenic and is labeled with warnings of irreversible eye damage and allergic reactions. Who would want these products in their yard? Most of us probably wouldn't, but unfortunately there is no legal definition or standard for natural or organic lawn care, and people don't think to read the label on lawn products. But just think, if you do insist on organic landscaping, not only will your lawn and adjacent waters be healthier, but you will raise the consciousness of your landscaping providers. If you maintain your own lawn, you can read labels and question retailers who carry toxic products. By speaking up and changing your practices, you can take a step forward for a healthy environment. And so we will sing, and we will celebrate, and we will engage as we come to this table. So let us begin by singing together, come to the table of grace. Friends, God is ever present with you, and the people say, and also with you. Turn to the people around you and tell them this news, the peace of Christ is always with you. Come to the table of peace. body, the body of Christ, breathes in together and out. As close as breath, the Holy is present with us, reminding us that there is always room for us, room for all. So lift up your hearts. And our family says, we lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the Holy One the Holy Living One, because it is the right thing to do, not only now, but always. For always is when God is with us. I invite you to open both palms upward in the sign language, forgive, as we learned. We thank you, Sustainer God, that you are here with us. And I'm sorry. We thank you, Creator God, that you formed every one of us, giving us your image, the desire for relationship. And now place your hands together in a sign that means with. We thank you, Sustainer God, that you are here with us and call us to be with one and for one another. Now bring your hands close to your faith in a sign for prayer. Become aware of your breath on your hands. We thank you, God, for breathing into us the breath of life. Even when we have turned away, you have remained with us, close as breath. Help us to remain close with one another, offering the breath of life wherever we can. And so we open our eyes, our hands, and our hearts to your will for us, and as you told us through your prophets. We join our voices together, praising you along with all who do. 
ever have done, and ever will do so, repeating, Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Everywhere we see your glory. Everywhere we see your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. And the widest. And the widest. And the deepest. And the deepest. Place in our hearts. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is your son who came to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. Listen, people. Christ is with you. He healed the sick fed the hungry, and sat down at the table and ate with especially those others considered unworthy. Let us remind ourselves by saying, Christ is present with everyone. Christ is present with everyone. Come to the table of love. night in which he gave himself up for us. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples and said, this cup is the new covenant. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Come to the table of love. Let us be a community of messengers, proclaiming and reminding each other and creation that Christ has died. Christ, has died. Christ is risen. Christ, is risen. Christ, will Christ will come again. I invite you to raise your hands in the ancient Christian posture of prayer, as together we seek God's blessing on these elements. Pour out your Holy Spirit. On us, gathered here, on us gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and cup, and bread and cup. Let, them let them be for us the body and blood of Christ, so that we may be for the world the body of Christ, liberated by his life and witness. Be with us, Holy Spirit. Fill us so that you can move through us, welcoming all the family. I invite you to make a point of connection with those around you by laying a hand on a shoulder, holding hands, or simply extending your hands towards others, whatever is most comfortable for you. By your Spirit, we are one with Christ, the host of this table, and one with one another. Let this joy be seen in us outside of this place. It is with great thanks that all God's people say, Amen. 
come to the table of joy. let us find joy in this feast whatever it is that you have available are blessed to you and to all let us come to the table for these are the gifts of God for the people of God we have been shown the hospitality of Jesus, may we take on the mantle of hospitality in our own lives, eating and drinking and inviting others to the welcome table. We have been fed, we have been nourished, we have been transformed. It is with great thanks that we have come to this table and let the people say, Amen. Amen. few announcements before we go. We are in this season when we are uh, taking up our collection for our neighbors in need. And our neighbors' need seems to be ever increasing, doesn't it? It's a gathering, an offering of the national setting that we take up annually at World Communion Sunday. So consider in these next few weeks what it is you might give. Uh, find a spot on the website to make that gift or bring it here um, in a month to our to our service. We are meeting on Tuesdays for our book club, reading Good Omens. Um, what are the omens for Tuesday? Is it looking good? Are we down by the river? And one day closer to the apocalypse. We're one day, we are one day closer to the apocalypse. Um, those who are reading will understand. We are at Wednesday. Read Wednesday this week. Now, I, I spent all that time talking about, you know, not having secret handshakes, and I just had one, right? But, uh, but that's, that's to entice you to get the book and join the group. We're having a good time, so that's coming up. Um, speaking of a good time, on Thursdays, you can come right back to this room if you're so inclined. And if, um, and if someone brings a bag of microwave popcorn and we find a microwave and it works, we might even, you know, have a snack. I mean, there, there are a lot of ifs in that sentence, I know, but, you know, that's how we, that's how we roll here. Um, or you can stay at home. <laughs> And, and make your own popcorn where you know it'll work, and you can watch online uh, as we watch movies together. We'll watch a few movies during uh, the month of September. Uh, the first week, this Thursday, we're going to watch Babette's Feast. Then we will watch Chocolat the next week, and then we will watch gr uh, Fried Green Tomatoes the following week. And then the next Thursday, I will be <laughs> at the uh, BTS convocation, and, uh, and therefore the 28th is not a very good day to gather for our fourth gathering, so you will notice I very cleverly changed the slide to say 27th. We'll meet on Wednesday that week, okay? Um, and, and what we'll do is have a, um, a snack potluck, because what better kind of potluck is there than snacks, right? Everyone who, who wants to show up here on site, bring a snack, and, uh, and we will watch a really wonderful show, all right, Gina? I don't know how many of you were turned on to this, but uh, will somebody please feed Phil is just one of the most fun shows you'll ever watch on Netflix. It's on Netflix. It's on Netflix. But uh, um, he has he has family here in Maine. Actually, he was just recently in Maine. I saw on his Facebook feed. But anyway, visiting family. Uh, there's one episode where he comes here and you know he eats the obligatory um, um, lobster roll at Reds, and you know, um, and but. But because he feels bad about people staying in line, he buys one for everybody. That, that's how Phil is. So, I mean, that, that's what this episode is like. So we'll watch that together and, and, and reflect on anything we've picked up from, from the movies and, and that show and just have a conversation that day about, uh, about what it means to be accepted at the table and show hospitality and how we might be together. So hopefully that will be a fun time for the month of September. Um, also in September is our Living Word Association annual meeting at Pilgrim Lodge, and you don't need to be a delegate to go. Uh, you might just want to go and be there for the worship, because who doesn't want to be at 
Pilgrim Lodge, this beautiful space down by the, the lake for a Sunday afternoon worship, and that's on the 17th. So uh, keep that in your calendars and in mind for what's coming up. Anything else before our closing hymn? Are there announcements that I've forgotten? Anything that someone needs to highlight? If not, let's sing our closing hymn. Just before the final words, I see that Frank shared in the chat after I walked away from it <laughs> that uh, he came through his surgery very well and is very excited about the new freedom of mobility that he has from uh, his surgery. So we are grateful for that. We're grateful that, that we are now able to move forward from this table where we have been fed and nourished into a world that needs to be fed and nourished and that we carry that gift that we are God's children who have all the gifts we need because we are filled with God's spirit. We are filled with God's love, the greatest power in all the universe. And so go forth into your living and give glory to the Christ. Give glory to the creator God who knows even the sparrow that falls. May this God of ours lift you on gentle breezes that you might soar with eagles and bless you with a gift of insight and wisdom and give glory to the Christ who comes to you in the forms of the least, the last, and the lost. May Christ bless you with the gift of tears that you may shed them with all who weep, whether in sorrow or in joy. And give glory to God's Holy Spirit, God's wild, untamed spirit, wild as any wild goose, May this wild goose spirit of our God lead you into those places where you will not go on your own and bless you with enough foolishness to take up your cross and follow. And may the love of God be with you all and all those whom you love and all those whom none but God loves. Now and until that day of God's judgment when justice will roll down like waters and peace will blossom among all the peoples. Amen. Thank you.